everyone, welcome to our Jira How To series where we cover the most commonly asked questions about Jira. I'm Nikki from Jigsaw and today we are going to have a look on how you can create Sprint in Jira. So let's just jump into it. First things first, you need to create a project in Jira, which is going to be a type Scrum. There are multiple types of projects in Jira, but only Scrum type of project allows you to create a Sprint. So you just click on Create Project button and then on the bottom you find Jira software and here is Scrum. So you select this one and we create a project. You can select either of these options, team managed project or company managed project. If you would like to know a little bit more about the differences, you can either read the text underneath or you can watch our other video where, which is linked up here in the corner, where I explain uh, differences between these two projects and when you could use them. So I'm going to select the company managed one and we are going to create a project. Now this project is going to be completely blank. So if you go to your backlog here, this is where you usually place your items that you would like to plan for your future sprints. So let's just add here task one, task two. The way how I create the sprint is just by clicking on this create button here and the sprint is created here on the top. You can edit this, the information. So if you would like to, for example, change the name, give your sprint some kind of duration, start and end date or a sprint goal, you can all fill it up here. So for example, we like to name our sprints by animals. So let's just say, for example, a doggy. And then here there's an option to fill a start date and the end date. So uh, you can either select the custom duration. So if you, for example, would like to have your sprint for just 10 days or something like that, you could select it here. Or what you can do is you can select the one of the predefined duration, which is one, two, three or four weeks. Usually it's not really recommended to have a sprint longer than a month because then it's not really a sprint who can sprint for longer than a month. Uh, so let's say two weeks is kind of like a typical duration for the sprint. So you can select that. And then uh, the end date, if you select the start date is automatically calculated. It's also good practice to add a sprint goal, which is kind of like a common goal of the sprint that your team then can see all the time while they are using their Kanban board. And it just reminds them on what they're uh, about to achieve by completing the tasks in this sprint. So I just added one here so you can see it on the board. First, before we would go to the active sprints here to our Kanban, uh, we need to first plan the issues because otherwise you wouldn't see anything there. So you need to assign the issues to your sprints. So I just drag and drop them there. And now when you have issues in your sprint, you still won't be able to see anything on your Kanban because you didn't start the sprint yet. So you need to click on this start sprint button. Then you're prompt here with all the sprint information. You can review it again and then you can start the sprint. And once you do that, you're taken to the Kanban board where you can view all the items that you planned for the sprint and you can move them around to track the progress. Now here on the top, that's our sprint goal that we filled up. So it's really a great way to just keep your team aware of what you're trying to achieve in this particular sprint. On the top here, you can see how much days are remaining uh, in your sprint. So uh, you know if there's any time pressure or your team still has enough time. And there's also a complete sprint button. So if you are ready to complete your sprint, you can click on complete sprint button and then you're prompted with this dialog. If there are any issues that are still remaining that you didn't complete in the sprint, you can select where you would like to move them. So you can either create a new sprint or move them to already existing sprint, or you can just review them, move them to down if they are done or move them out of the sprint or uh, back to the backlog. Uh, so I'm going to complete these just so you can see that. So if you complete the sprint, then you are taken to the sprint report screen uh, where you can see how the story points were, were burned over the time. Now, I didn't have enough data in this particular project, but I'm going to create one uh, custom project with the data so you can see how this report looks like now. A 
Okay, so I have this project already with the data. So uh, there are many more issues in here. They also have a story points assigned. So for example, if you would go here to the reports and you would use a sprint report in Jira, you would already see your story points being burned down and you would see uh, also information about the guideline and what, how they should be burned so you can compare. It's a really great way how to review your sprint and see if the sprint is healthy or no and if you need to fix something. One last thing that I wanted to mention is that you can create multiple sprints, but only run one sprint at the time. So if you would like to plan, for example, for the future sprints, you can definitely have them listed on the backlog and assign the issues to them uh, as you go, which is really good for your future planning as well. So for example, I'm going to create one here. So I created the sample sprint and if I move the tasks here, you will see that now I have a two sprints that I have here on this backlog and I can plan with. Alright, so that's about it for this video. I hope that it helped you figure out how to create your sprint in Jira. If you are interested in more Jira how-tos, you can subscribe to our Jaxo YouTube channel or you can find one of these link videos and click on them. See you in the next one!